Ellie here from The Dark Imp. Just going to do a quick video showing you how farmers score in Carcassonne. I'm doing this because I posted about Carcassonne a few times in the last few weeks and I've had the same comment several times in response which is we love playing but we play without the farmers because we're not sure how they score or we haven't really got to grips with them. I think farmers make Carcassonne uh, so I would like to show you how to play using the farmers. Okay, so there are four different ways you can you can use your meeples. Of course, you always have to place the meeple when you place the tile. So um, if I'm placing this tile here, I can use a meeple in three different ways. I can put it in the, the monastery as a monk, I can put it on the road as a thief, or I can put it in the field as a farmer. If the... Um, if the field, if the tile has two separate fields, either side of a road, and you want to put a farmer down, you're going to choose which side you put it on and you can't move it afterwards. It's a little bit like putting down a city tile that has multiple cities. You have to choose where you're going to put your meeple to be a knight. Okay, so that was the fourth way that you can use your meeple. Okay, um, now, unlike the other three ways of using your meeples, uh, so thieves, for example, when you complete a city, you score the city, you take the, the meeple back and you can use it again. Same with roads. When you complete a road, when, when, it's, when it's finished and it has two ends, uh, you score the road, you remove the meeple. Same with uh, monasteries. When you finish the monastery, all the tiles around the monastery, you can uh, take the meeple and score the monk. Uh, farmers are different. When you put down a, a, a meeple in a field to be a farmer, it's going to stay there till the end of the game. And that's one of the reasons we put them face down, so that you can always tell that that meeple is a farmer and you're never going to be able to take it back. So you have to think carefully about when you're going to put these down. Right, okay, so meeples that are farmers score according to how many completed cities there are in the field. So let's just quickly look at fields. Fields are defined uh, by the green areas that are bound by roads, cities and the edge of the board. So right now this field goes around, around this city and over here. Um, if I was to put another uh, tile here, the field would now extend down here, but I'm not going to be able to score this city because it's not complete. So to farmers score according to the number of complete cities in their field. At the moment, I've only got one in this field. This is going to score me three at the end of the game. So if this was an end game position, I'm going to get three points for this farmer. If I had a farmer here, in this little field, you see this field is already bound, and it was bound when I put the tile down. Uh, there are three completed cities that border it. So I'm going to get three, six, nine points for this farmer at the end of the game. If this one is uncompleted, I'm only going to get six points. I only score the completed cities. Uh, this, let's say I've got a, a meeple here as a farmer. There's one, two completed cities in this field here. Now, let's say that um, we have somebody who's put down a farmer here in this tiny little field which is at the moment just scoring three points and someone that's put one here it is absolutely fine to, you, you can only put down a farmer if there's if there's not a farmer in another field so if there's not a farmer in that field so what i can't do is i can't put a tile here and put a farmer in it because this is this farmer's field, okay? You can never put down a, uh, a farmer in a field where there's already a farmer. This is one field. I can't put it here either. There's a farmer here. This is one field. But I could, if I wanted to, uh, have a farmer here. So let's say I'm putting down this tile. And I'm thinking, oh, I quite fancy trying to join up with that field. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a farmer here. Okay, that's a legal move. This field is only very, very small, and it's only touching this uncompleted city. In a future turn, it is a perfectly valid move to do this. Now there are two farmers in one field. As with the other um, scoring for for the for, for the other types of meeples. 
if you are sharing a space, if you're sharing a road, if you're sharing a city, you share the points. Well, in fact, you both score the points. So you both score exactly what the points are. So if at the end of the game, this is the situation, both of these are going to score six points because there's two completed cities. If it was like this, both of them will score um, nine points because there's three completed cities. However, if my, when if I'm the blue person and the blue player and I put down this and I decide to put another farmer in this tie, another farmer down and it's in this little field here, it's not connected to anything and then in a later turn I manage to connect that, this field is now a bigger field and it's got three farmers in it. But I have a majority as the blue player. The blue player has a majority of farmers over the yellow one. So when it comes to end game scoring, you're going to remove the yellow and score for the blue. You only get to score it once. It's, you don't get to, it's, it's exactly like the roads and the, um, the, the, the cities. The person with the most meeples scores it. If it's a tie, you both get to score it, but you don't score it twice if you've got two meeples. So really it works exactly the same way as the cities. The only difference is that you leave your farmers there till the end of the game. So hopefully that clears things up a bit. If you've got any more questions or you want me to clarify any further, let me know.